Out of School Time is a network of more than 200 programs serving over 20,000 youth, grades K through 12, funded through the City of Philadelphia, Department of Human Services, and managed by Public Health Management Corporation. Through the Out of School Time network, 72 provider agencies operate after school and summer programs, Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. Since the fall of 2009, out of school time programs have used a project based learning approach to its programming. Project based learning is an inquiry based approach to learning that is based on students' interest in real world context. It is an opportunity for hands on learning of new content and 21st century skills. So, project based learning, the way that I describe it is that it's an extension of the classroom in a kind of a sneaky way. The the reason I say this is because they're still learning. We're still implementing things that they should be getting in school. Uh, they have to read, they have to write, we're dialoguing, they have to research. So these are things that they're getting in school, but they don't realize that it's still academic. Um, and the reason why they don't realize it is because they drive the projects themselves. So they come up with the topics that they want to research, they come up with the themes that they want to focus on, and then we provide that academic structure to it. All projects follow a similar structure, beginning with a driving question. A driving question is a provocative and open-ended question that youth want to explore that helps facilitate their learning process. All projects follow a similar structure, beginning with this driving question. The question may center upon any topic. Before beginning the project, staff members engage youth in discussion, surveys, or focus groups to identify the project topic and driving question. At Centro Nueva Creación, students chose to learn about the environment. The students came up with the cleanup idea because they they don't, they don't like to see trash on the ground, and they want to they want to live in a better and cleaner place. And then they say, "Oh, I'm kind of liking this." One of my favorite projects are the that we did one about the earth and and how to take care of it, and, and we kind of did a play about the whole thing. We had to choose out of a lot. We had to choose to, to recycle around this whole block or to do the play, and, and there was more, but I, could, I, I couldn't remember that. We pick a lot of our projects because she wants us to do what we're comfortable with. She has like a chalkboard where she writes some, some stuff down, and then, and then she, and she writes stuff from one, from one to the end uh, until it goes to the end. And then, and then she checks who wants the most, the most votes. The driving question that students and staff decided upon is, how can what we do in our community impact the climate globally? The driving question is about, you know, planting seeds of change. And I think that sort of goes aligned with the whole theme for the program and sort of the, the theory behind everything that we do here and our our driving questions are sort of reflective of the driving force of the organization, then, which is just planting these positive seeds. During the project, activities are engaging and hands-on. They got water inside, watch out! The project activities build towards a culminating event. The culminating event allows youth to publicly share what they have learned and achieved during the project. At Centro Nueva, youth are taking a three-pronged approach, a play about caring for the environment, a community cleanup, and planting a garden. At the Cardinal Bevilacqua Community Center, high school students are planning fundraisers for local charities. So the driving question for this project that we're currently engaged in is how can fundraising for a char charitable cause affect our community? Um, and this sort of evolved out of their, <laughs> their love of competition and that we are kind of in a desperate community and there's need all around us for certain things. And so we're challenging the kids to come up with a way to meet that need. Um, and we gave them complete freedom to pick a charity that is local to the Philadelphia area and to pick a fundraiser that they felt would help them bring in funding for that cause. Our event is, we're fundraising for um, adopting, uh, adopting for um, Salvation Army and we're trying to raise money for their foster care and we're 
The way we're going to do that is um, we're going to set up a carnival for the kids in the neighborhood and like have fun and at the same time like for them to know that them being there is like going to help out other kids that don't have families and have like the opportunities they have. Making projects student driven means allowing students to make their own choices and mistakes. In the very beginning when we were talking about what we could do to raise money, we, um, we actually came up with two ideas. One would be a basketball tournament, like a five on five tournament slash uh, skills challenge where there would be like three point shootout and a slam dunk contest for high school students in the area. And a dance. Um, one of the things I told them was that it would be too hard to uh, facilitate both. One of the fundraisers uh, that we did for, the, uh, for, uh, for a charity was for breast cancer. So we thought that if we do maybe like a get together or a party, that it would have been a good idea. I just think that a lot of people that put like, enough effort into it, like promoting it on private internet or making flyers or just even going to school telling a few friends about it. And then when it came down to the last few weeks, we should have really like made it a uh, number one thing to get the word out there. And we didn't, we just expected people to show up at the day of the event, which they did. I think they picked the dance because it'd be more fun for them. Um, and it turned out not to be. But we're going to go back to square one and we're going to talk about that 5 on 5 basketball tournament. We're going to do something called the All Star Weekend where people pay money to do a three point shootout, a dunk contest, or the uh, point guard athlete, athletic uh, challenge. And the only time we probably have to come out of our pockets is for the trophies. What are they What are they playing for, Shaq? I know you had a good idea last week. I said uh, trophies. You got real with that? Yeah, little like little what basketball player. What basketball player don't want to add another trophy to his trophy yeah. case? You cool with trophies? Yeah. The girls are doing a carnival in June, and they're targeting families with young children. Um, so we're pretty hopeful that they will have a good turnout for their event. I think there are a lot of things that we can put into our event and make um, better from the like from the things that we saw from the boys and like we could when we do it today we're talking about how we can promote it better and like put it out there more and like I think that since we did have like the we do have like the we get to watch how see like what they did wrong I think that we can actually use that as a learning experience and use it better. Programs use tools such as the project planning form to help organize their project, debriefing forms to gather students' reflections on the project, and rubrics to track student progress with project content and 21st century skills. When these teens come here, I really think they're developing a lot of skills that they're not uh, normally developing like in school in their normal settings. Project-based learning is uh, just a, a different way of, um, I guess, learning uh, than normally that you do in school. Uh, I think this program is great because these kids are used to sitting in a desk and hearing from one teacher uh, about one subject. And when they come here and they engage in these projects, um, you know, they get to move about, they get to work with friends. Uh, there, is, there are no desks. Uh, there is no teacher. Uh, a lot of it is is driven by them to uh, what they want to do and uh, how they want to do it and secretly under all that they are learning how to work together as a team, how to problem solve, uh, you know, and how to really accomplish goals that they're setting for themselves. The way I understand what they're doing in a typical school day is really learning things to a test and it's a lot more content oriented and so project based learning is much more process oriented and it's about how do we work together to solve this problem? And what are the things that we come up against in trying to solve this problem? How do we get around these roadblocks? And it's not about memorizing facts or being able to regurgitate things or pass a test. It's about really what I said, just working together to solve the problem and how that helps children to become better thinkers and better, um, it builds their confidence because they're able to realize that they can see something through from start to finish. My group is gonna be a group of leaders. They, they have their own ideas, they usually want to talk, and they really, I think they're really smart kids. Project-based learning has also um, helped them to develop their leadership uh, because they uh, get to select 
what they are learning. I mean, I'm just a guide, and then they are the ones that are actually implementing the curriculum. I have learned. Um, I have learned how to help the earth, how to clean up, and how is it to work hard. We've been very fortunate this year. Um, the students have really sold the program to each other. Uh, I always tell other people when talking about the program that we didn't have to market. We didn't have to send flyers out. I didn't have to make calls to schools um, because the students really advertised the program itself. Mostly, I think, because of the freedom of choice and that they could come here and develop the program the way that they wanted it to be. Um, and a lot of the high school students in the area are drawn into something that's very age appropriate, that's very, um, comfortable, something that they can have fun at is with their peers and they don't feel like they're being lectured to or they're being, um, you know, they're being guided in a certain way that's very similar to, to what they get at school. So this is kind of a free space for them where we implement a little bit of, of guidance but in a way that's friendly. 